The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. We'll begin in about one minute. Let's begin. Thank you for uh, attending our final session of Applied Day 2019. I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, BIM and manufacturing and how those, those industries are crossing over. Uh, before we jump into that, I'd like to just talk a little bit about Applied Engineering and uh, let people know um, a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Uh, for over 33 years, Applied Engineering has been meeting with our, meeting your engineering challenges, um, whether it be with your technology team providing training, implementation, and support of software and hardware solutions, or with our services team providing design and manufacturing engineering as well as software development and rubber graphics. We fit your needs. We have the talent, technology, and perspective uh, to help you in many ways uh, with engineering needs. Our talented team of tech engineers will work at your site or at our design centers using the latest tools to help you with product design and documentation. We provide the perspective. Our outside perspective will bring new ideas from a variety of industries and backgrounds. We have the technology. Our software team will sell and implement industry leading to design software and will train and support your team the whole way. This is just a taste of what we can provide for you and your company. Uh, after the, at the end of the presentation, we'll put up a hot ways to contact us. If there are any further questions or uh, uh, anything you want to talk to us about, please reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to spend some time with you and, and understand the challenges that you're facing. Um, and then the last thing to note is questions during the, the presentation today. If there are any questions, please uh, post them on the side panel. You can put them under the questions tab or under the chat uh, tab as well. Um, if they're quick and easy, we'll try to uh, answer them right on the chat immediately. Uh, otherwise, your questions will get addressed at the end of the presentation. Um, today, I've got Fernando Lima with me from Autodesk. And again, he will be speaking on BIM and manufacturing. And I will switch you over as a presenter, Fernando. All right, thank you. All right, thanks for joining today. Um, good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. Um, uh, today, what we're going to be talking is uh, building information modeling for manufacturers. And the presentation is uh, how to get spec into uh, designers, architects, projects in a way that your name, your brand shows uh, during the design or on the specs. Uh, you can have your objects with your model, your company name, your model numbers. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna, be, gonna be covering today Revit, a little bit of Inventor and the, how the workflow works. Uh, and before I do that, just a quick introduction uh, about myself. Uh, my background is architecture and I've been working with architecture and technology for the last 16 years. Started as a project architect a long time ago, and then quickly transitioned to CAD manager, B manager, and uh, worked as a Revit instructor as well, helping companies go through the process of uh, implementing Revit design companies and construction companies as well. So I have a very good, um, understanding of how the AEC industry works. And uh, I'd like to, to start things just making sure that we're all on the same page 
And I want to talk a little bit about building information modeling, what it is, uh, how it works. And building information modeling is being used and adopt, adopted by the construction industry uh, for the last 10 years or so, it gained a lot of popularity. Uh, but building information modeling or BIM for short is um, a intelligent 3D model based. And it, we, we like to say that building information modeling is a process. It's not only focused on one specific tool, but in a workflow. And basically what it is, is a, is a 3D model that has intelligence, has data attached to it. So you, you can use this data for uh, your project uh, and really from the beginning of the project design phases all the way to maintenance. The idea is that you have this data behind and that that's that's going to be available throughout the operations and maintenance of this building. So uh, that is one of the main advantages of building information modeling. Uh, the current state of being adoption in the AC industry. Uh, this is a report from the NBS. This is one of the latest reports we have on adoption of building information modeling. And you can see about 75 are aware and using on their projects and about 25% uh, they are aware but not using and really only about 1% don't really know what building information modeling is. And it, it is really becoming the golden standard, let's say, for the construction and, and design industry, just because there's so much efficiency and gains in terms of cutting times for delivering the projects and saving money throughout the process. So it's really uh, something that it will only grow as we can see from this from this graphic right here. And in this same report, this 2018 report from NBS, a um, couple couple of the questions that they ask is um, if uh, people doing those projects, if they want to have access to to models or rabbit families as as we we call them um, from manufacturers and and it's just not 2d objects but objects that are a, a good 3d representation of this object and also have the uh, the metadata available or the parameters or um, whatever is the information behind this uh, this 3D object that is just not a, a model, but it also has the intelligence behind it. Um, and again, the other question, we, we need manufacturers to provide us with being objects, about 75% saying yes. Uh, and there's, there's a very good explanation for that. Creating this content is not easy and most of the users, uh, they don't know how to create this content. So it's not even a matter of wanting to uh, create this content. Content is really a matter of having time or having the knowledge to be able to create this content. Um, so only a few people inside an architecture office will know how to create and it can be time consuming, especially if you don't have uh, 3D information on this uh, on this object. Now, if you're the manufacturer and if you have the 3D information and you have the metadata, uh, we're going to talk about some processes that you can use or a workflow that you can use to migrate from your information from Inventor to Revit. And there's a few work automated workflows that make this um, this creation the creation of this content a lot easier. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what are building information modeling objects. And uh, being objects or Revit families or components, they're, they're the same thing. Uh, they are something similar to AutoCAD blocks. If you heard about AutoCAD blocks in the past or you know how this works, it's, it's a similar way uh, that, that they work, but there is one important distinction that is uh, the objects are 3D models and you're gonna have information like you're seeing here. Uh, for this specific example, we have a chair, an office chair, uh, and we can have a simplified description. We have sizes, height, uh, we have a manufacturer, and we have uh, down the uh, here on the slide, you're gonna see something called LOD, and LOD stands for level of development. So it's important to understand how LOD works uh, throughout the process. And, and I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but during the design process, you start with something that is kind of a generic model and you don't really have this uh, specifications like manufacturer model or anything like that, but towards uh, construction documentation, you're gonna move towards, uh, you start at LOD 100, and then you have LOD 200, 300, and 400 is really the most amount of detail that you have during design phases. You may have LOD 500, and that would be an S build. Uh, that's after the design phase and construction. So we're going to be focusing up to LOD 400. Uh, but that's Again, basically as much detail you can have in your model. Uh, and then when you get to this point, you're gonna have one object that is defined with a model, uh, all the specifications or configurations, but model, model number, manufacturer, and, and things like that. Uh, depending on the industry you are, if it's not, furniture but maybe MEP components or other building components. Uh, the level of detail may change a little bit but uh, the classification 300, 400, it, it will always be the same. And I, I have a couple of exa examples here that I want to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show a couple things and I'm going to go to the Herman, since, since we're talking about Herman Miller uh, chair, they, they're actually a, a pretty good example of a manufacturer providing information because they take a lot of care in creating the Revit families or the Revit components. Uh, and it, they try to do things the right way. Their components are really detail. All the information on the models are really, really good. Uh, so I, I like to show them as one of the examples of uh, how to how to offer models uh, for Revit or good information modeling. Then we're going to talk about Beam Object. That is a website that hosts a lot of different uh, objects for building information modeling and manufacturers as well. And this is another option uh, where you can offer your models. And then I'm gonna show an example that is a company, Schneider Electric, that uh, created a, a really nice plugin for Revit in a way that it, it is really integrated and it's really easy uh, for the users to find the right type of electrical equipment and panels that they need to use in their projects and download those models and have those models inside of their um, inside of their projects. So let's switch quickly to um, Chrome here, and uh, while we do that, I'm gonna actually open Revit as well. And I'm gonna show one one of the, those families that I downloaded from Herman Miller website. And we're gonna talk a little bit about 
uh, the parameters and the, the information that you can load in this Revit component. Okay, so we are at the Herman Miller website and they have something uh, they list as resources uh, and they have generic 3D models and this is just for generating rendering, uh, renderings. But they have something that they call Revit families and specifically they, they call it by the name of the product that they're offering and they will have everything really uh, well organized in terms of the line of products they have and thinking about the products that they offer it really makes a lot of difference to have the correct sizes and the correct specifications because if you were to create those um, components for Revit or if you want to show uh, an office layout accurately you, you need to have this 3D model uh, accurate so it, it's really hard for architects to spend time in creating this type of content so you if you can offer that's a huge time saving and this is something that is really necessary but anyway uh we have everything pretty pretty well organized so what i did here is i downloaded herman miller collection or the seating collection uh and they they will have high highly accurate details in terms of uh options and specifications and materials and everything so if i if the architects need to create a realistic rendering of this project and, and for interior design projects that's really really important uh when they're creating the the renderings the the chairs the 3d model of the chair will show all the correct materials and correct options and product number once they generate a list of all those chairs that will be used on the project you you will have a manufacturer listed and you're, you're going to have a product number or a model number or something like that so it's a lot easier to get this specific product into the final uh, project when uh, somebody will be purchasing those chairs it's a lot easier to get your specific brand your um, specific manufacturer into the final product okay so going inside of Revit I just opened Revit here and I loaded this uh, chair model in here uh, one of the, the chair models uh, that are available and I'm just going to go ahead and open this thing and you're going to see that um, Revit just told me that uh, it was upgrading the uh, the model from Revit 2016 to 2020. So this is a tip for uh, if you're creating something like a content for um, Revit families. Revit uh, products, they, they're not backwards compatible. So usually you want to create your families your content uh, for the oldest version of Revit that, that you can and in this case it was created with Revit 2016 um, and typically four years prior to the, the current project so right now uh, the current Revit version is 2020 but 2019 is also really common so uh, if you're creating your content for 2015, 2016, and newer versions, you're, you're going to be fine. Just keep that in mind. Um, it's better to have your models for like 2015, 2016. That's a way that you will uh, make sure that people will be able to use your, your, uh, your content. Okay, a couple things that I want to show here. This is a, a, a 2D view of this model, and I'm going to switch quickly to a 3D view. So when we go to a 3D view, you're going to we're going to see that this is a pretty uh, accurate model of this specific chair. So this was all created inside of Revit. 
but again, you have the option to export information from the inventor, and I'm, I'm going to show how you can do that. But one thing that is interesting here is that uh, the 3D model is one thing, and the information we're going to see in 2D, in 2D, in plans or elevations, they're a little bit different. And that's so you can keep your models the, the smallest file size possible. Uh, and at the same time, you can add detail. But the detail here, this is just line work, right? So it's not everything doesn't need to be in the 3D model. And that's uh, that's something really important because you don't want to have your files, really large files, heavy files, because uh, think about this, that the, the architecture model or the architecture projects, you're gonna have hundreds or maybe thousands of objects like this chair if we have a whole lot of detail. Um, at some point, it, it, Revit will become slow and it's going to be really hard to work in this project. Uh, spe that's especially important for things like MEP components, uh, just because it, by the end of the project, we're going to have thousands and thousands of objects. So the, the lightest the file, the better. And you have ways to add in this detail, either with 2D line works uh, or connectors or whatever it is, but you just keep in mind that geometry, the actual 2D model, needs to be uh, the least amount of detail possible, but still represent the, the product in a in a good way. Okay, so that's it for Revit and the family. So I mentioned beam object. So Beam Object is a website that um, used to be called Autodesk Seek, and then this Beam Object uh, company bought that. Uh, so that used to be something that was provided by Autodesk. Now it's another uh, company, but that's the largest uh, repository for Beam models and beam objects so this is one of the options and if you're a manufacturer you can click in here i'm a manufacturer and they will they will even have uh different channels to talk about this and they have uh they have different uh plans and options to host uh behind of who's downloading uh you can get a, a, a few other uh, informations based on their their service. So this is just so you are aware that there there is uh, another way that is not just only hosting mo your models in in your website, like uh, for instance the example from Herman Miller. Uh, it's it's good to note that uh, for Herman Miller and a lot of a lot of companies will do and. FAQ or a tutorial or something like that, just because it's it's a really good idea to not just provide your uh, information, but at least let other people know and understand what kind of uh, what kind of information you have, and uh, if you make changes to your to your library, you can have on this FAQ as well, or you can have a little bit of a tutorial just teaching people how to load models uh, inside of Revit or tips and tricks and things like that. So that goes a long way in making sure that um, the information is uh, used correctly. When I actually, I'm going to come back here to Revit because I forgot to show something. So we're going to be talking a lot about the, the parameters and the information that you can add to your 3D models. So I just wanted to uh, open this chair and show you that uh, we might have a few different options. So this is what we call parameters for the family or metadata. So you have information on uh, materials and finishes. And in this case, Herman Miller even adds their name to the materials just to make sure that uh, 
uh, you can you can separate whatever is out of the box materials than materials from a specific manufacturer. Uh, but that you can watermark this information. You can have your URL for the website. Uh, you can you can actually create any type of identity data or parameter here, and you can add pretty much any any type of information you want to. Uh, but in this case, you, we can see that we have like catalog code, things like that. This is all. This was all created by Herman Miller. This is not out of the box. Uh, information. So we have model number and we have links for the website or manufacturer and so on. So this is how you get when uh, people are creating schedules to buy those products. This is how your name will be showcased, your product uh, number. And in the future, even if you're generating quotes, for those projects, you might have this information uh, created in a way that's a lot easier to, to generate quotes just because you have all the product numbers and you may have all information you need to generate those quotes. And we will actually uh, talk about a, a couple of different ways you can use a configurator tool that would uh, allow you to generate both uh, a Revit component, a downloadable Revit component and a quote at the same time using uh, Inventor and Revit. But you can even add cost information if that's something you wanna do. Uh, most companies don't do that just because if you change something on your cost, cost of the products, then it's kind of hard to manage. Uh, people might have audit, out of date information and that, that can create confusion. But it's it's something you can do, just keep in mind that it is doable. Okay, coming back here to the presentation, one thing that I wanna show is how this company, Schneider Electric, created a plugin for Revit that a lot of people in their uh, and this is really for uh, electrical engineers. They need to be able to, so their electric can keep what kind of products you have and then click download into your project. You can even add uh, the name of the manufacturer. Okay, just a CAD and a beam object. So CAD uh, blocks or CAD components they're gonna be highly detailed geometry. You don't have the option. Uh, inside of Revit, you can actually, depending on the on the phase of the project you are, you can actually have different levels of detail in your geometry. So that helps in keeping things running smoothly in terms of uh, not bugging down the system until it's super slow. Uh, so CAD, you don't have any of that. Uh, CAD, again, is manufacturing-centric, so this is really uh, not meant for uh, other phases of the project, not for coordination, not for uh, maintenance, just because you don't really have a whole lot of information if we're talking about only 2D drawings. And at the... On the other hand, for being objects, especially because we have this rich uh, data uh, behind the, the 3D model, we, we can have this information even for the future for maintenance information. We can even add maintenance information and uh, things like manuals and things like that can be added to this uh, specific beam object. Okay, so specifically talking about the integration uh, between Inventor and Revit, the way the workflow works is, uh, it's really straightforward. So the first thing you can do, there's an automated way to simplify the geometry um, and then add the metadata, metadata. You can add connection points if that's, something you need to do, you can add some other specs, you can add your manufacturing information, uh, model number, things like that. 
and then we can export this information uh, in a in a native Revit uh, component file. This is going to be an RFA file uh, in a way that this is going to be completely compatible with Revit. The files are going to be small files, and it, it will it will work nicely with Revit. So this is one example of uh, a HVAC component that inside of Revit, this is uh, inside of Inventor, sorry. Uh, this is a fairly small file for Inventor, uh, but large if we take into consideration um, Revit uh, standards. So this is about 100 megabytes inside of Inventor. 20 megabytes for a step file. Uh, there's a lot of details, 500 plus components. So you can see on the top, this is the manufacturing information. If we were to export and create the same family for Revit, uh, it should look like the information we have uh, on the bottom. So it's less than one megabyte, which is the sweet spot for Revit. Remember, we really want to have those objects uh, as uh, small file size as possible. Uh, we need to have the the connections created because if we have electrical connections and if we have pipe connections or duct connections, we need to make sure that we specify the sizes of those connectors. And if we have information like um, power consump consumption, uh, flow, uh, duct size, pipe size, we need to have this information correct because this is going to be used to gen generate the 3D model and even to analyze airflow and things like that. So we need to make sure that this uh, connection information is correct because this is going to be really used uh, in the project to generate the, the correct information. Uh, adding the metadata, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, you can either do that inside of Revit or you, you can do that inside of Inventor. It's easier if you do that inside of Inventor before you're exporting the information. Uh, and you can see here the green arrows, those are just MEP connectors that will show uh, the right size when uh, this model is inside of Revit. You're going to even flow direction. You're going to have this information, size of the connectors, and really any, any type of specifics. You can, again, you can even create your own parameters if you want to or if you need to. In this case, it's a five-inch connector. Um, and it's going to be used to calculate the flow. So this is really integrated into how Revit works. And um, really, when the engineer is performing this flow calculations, this is this is this information is going to be used for that. So uh, engineers are always happy to know that this information is is accurate, and uh, you can rely on that. And the, the last step after simplifying the geometry, adding the metadata or altering the models, you're going to export this information. And this can be RFA, RFA or the native Revit family, Revit components. Uh, it could be IFC. IFC, it's kind of a generic beauty information modeling. Um, model that can be read by different software that is not from Autodesk. Um, and we have Autodesk Ex Exchange as well. And this is going to work for making the, the connection between different Autodesk products. OK, so what if uh, your products are configurable or you 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 have a lot of options. So in, in some cases, if you don't have a lot of options, maybe just a few different sizes, you can build in that information inside your family. Uh, 
but if you have a lot of configurable options and that can be quite complex if we talk about different uh, options that can we can be talking about hundreds or maybe thousands of combinations so for those situations we have a much better tool that is uh, the configurator 360 that will work with inventor uh, and you can use the configurator to first to add the kind of information or the the types of options you're going to offer to your customers and then you can um, you can download those families in the right configuration so we're, we're talking about different models uh, different finishes and all that so once you select everything you want uh, you don't actually need to know product uh, numbers or models or anything like that you just select your options and then you download a Revit family that will be um, completely it will have accurate information in terms of models and everything um, and it will also be a native Revit file so you don't need to worry about file sizes or anything like that so you know it's gonna work uh, and we're gonna show that in a in a little bit. There's even a few things that are quite interesting that you can do. I'm gonna show a live example of how this works uh, in a website, and you can even request a quote for this specific product or uh, whatever it is you're you're configuring. In some cases, can be multiple products, not just one. Um, but I've seen examples where people even have this integrated into ERP or CRM systems in a way that you configure your product online, you download the Revit family, um, you request a quote, and once you request this quote, you uh, will send that information into the, your CRM. So you're gonna have this information automatically enter in your CRM uh, in a way that you have the, you have the price, uh, you have the name of the customer, you have the contact, uh, and you can follow up in, uh, on this opportunity with a customer uh, later, at a later date, but you don't need to manually be entering this information. It's just much, better way, automated um, way to create quotes and have everything uh, linked to your um, CRM system and you don't you don't need to have all this work done manually. Uh, so just to talk about how the the um, configurator work, first thing you need to do is you need to define the parameters and the options you're gonna have. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna have just, uh, we're gonna have to define the rules. So in terms of size and length, so what kind of parameters will be configurable and the options. Uh, and this is something you're gonna do inside of Inventor. And then uh, you can deploy this as an online tool. And for this specific company, I'm gonna show this uh, on their website, just just to give you an idea how this looks like. And again, this is one of those uh, situations where you can generate your quote from here. And if you want to, you, you would be able to download this file as a Revit component file. So I know it would be the exact um, exact product that I, I, I would be buying. So I have the quote, I have the 3D model, I have the specs. So I have all the information that I need to, to make sure that I'm buying the right thing. And to show that, I'm gonna go to the Conform uh, group website. So the manufacturer uh, bags and platforms for, for roofs. They're a company based in Australia. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the configuration tool and they have this online build plus quote tool that they created using config configurator 360. And then you're gonna select what kind of 
product you're going to be using. And then online, I'm going to have in real time the option to select my options, select my product. So I have different sizes and I have different options. So if I change something here, I'm going to be able to see that um, the graphics are not up to date, so I can update. And this will take a few seconds. But again, I can rotate this thing in a 3D. I can see everything that is uh, going on with this product. I can see my options. Uh, I can export different formats, so AutoCAD. Uh, you can predefine that RFA. Again, this is the, the Revit file. Uh, bill of materials. Or if we can, we, if we want to request a quote, we can just fill the information here, and the quote will be generated for this specific product that I, I configured here on the website myself. So it's really easy to use, gives me an accurate 3D model feedback. I can export this to a, a host of different options uh, for 2D, 3D, bill of materials, and so on, um, and I can I can request a, an accurate quote based on a bill of materials as well um, that will I know will be accurate because I I have all the all the right options all the right products and models and things like that so this is a really neat way of integrating everything. And for this uh, configuration workflow, uh, the, 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 we, we have a few more steps. So we have to define the rules for configuration. We simplify the geometry. We add metadata. We upload or publish the configurator. And then we, we will configure how, the, how you're going to be able to export this information. Uh, and then you're, you're gonna you're gonna have this tool on your website uh, available for everybody. Okay, and just to finish the presentation today, we have about 15 minutes. I think we're right on track. Uh, again, if you have questions, please type uh, either on the questions tab or on the chat. We're gonna try to follow up and answer the questions uh, but i'm going to be playing three short videos here that show how the process work from first simplifying the, the information inside of um, inside of inventor then adding the metadata and then the last step is really just exporting or having the the configure the configurator options added to your models. So I'm going to be talking over. Uh, we we have uh, an audio track, but I, I don't believe you can listen to the audio track. So what is going on uh, the simplification of event options in terms of how you're going to be simplifying the geometry and you have different options for uh, simply and simplifying things like uh, just the geometry itself the size of the features you want to export so in this case you can see that it's a really um, accurate all the internal components like sizes and fillets and things like that so we're going to remove chamfers and fillets. Uh, we're we're going to remove holes, actually pick specific features like those holes. And in this case, this is important because we can use that to create, connect, will be in, inside connect to the actual uh, piping of the type of features uh, correctly inside of our Revit families. So let me just check if I'm 
on the right video. So this is the first one. Okay, so this is the second one. So this is all about adding the right information, the metadata, simplified geometry. But again, you still want to have the right information in terms of connectors. So you can see uh, this is going to define the flow. So it's if it's in or out. And again, think about Revit, uh, the size, uh, the type of connection, and even you can specify other other things. So it's specifying omni-class uh, information, description. You're going to be able to add manufacturer, your URL, model, things like that, and this supported as well. So once you get into Revit and you add these connectors in uh, the two supplies with the correct size, the correct types of piping based on the information from the connectors. Uh, and this is showing the configurator options. So the, this is showing the, the options. Uh, the options is we're seeing things or heights, types of different level of detail, different level of development for your model. So you're going to go through the same problem model. So you need to first define then the same process we, we so uh, then export this information to the configurator 360. And then you're going to be able to test this uh, thing. So see all your different options. So this is very similar to what I showed online. And then uh, this information again, and then uh, inside of Revit, just open your, you're going to have all the, the correct. Um, so this, this is, again, this is really, really helpful for whoever is designing uh, the, the project because you really, you want to have accurate information you want to um, both the the way things look the 3d model and materials and things like that so if you have this this is great that's very helpful in creating uh renderings and in selling this uh concept or selling the design intent to the owners or whoever is is uh, reviewing and paying for this project. So this is one way you get your products spec. And another way is really always having the correct information in terms of sizes and specs and data and model numbers and things like, like that. So this is the second way that you make sure that your name will be shown on specs and you're going to have product numbers and things like that being spec on schedules and things like that. Uh, and again, just to kind of recap, um, Autodesk has the largest portfolio for just, not just all manufacturing from design uh, all the way to manufacturing and integration with building information modeling and AC industry. Uh, again, this is through Inventor, Configurator 360, or the uh, the collection, the product design collection, and um, true rapid as an added license to your collection. And uh, we have a few extra minutes, uh, about nine minutes or so. Um, I'm going to check if we have any questions, and it doesn't look like we have any questions. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the chat, and it doesn't look like we have anything. So if you want to, if you have questions, you want to type something, uh, we have a few more minutes. I can try to address any of the questions, or you can always reach out later. Um, 
I added a handout. It's an ebook that covers a lot of the information I went through today. Uh, go ahead and download this ebook. It's on the handout section. Uh, you can always refer to this information later. So this is a lot of good links, uh, kind of a recap of the presentation today if you want to get in touch. As well with Autodesk, you're gonna have the option to do so. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna give a few more minutes. If we don't have any questions, we will probably be giving you back uh, seven minutes or so of your day. Uh, so again, thank you for joining today. Uh, and if there's no other questions, uh, please feel free to get in touch with either applied engineering technology or with Autodesk, and we will try to help you and answer your cat questions in any way we can. All right, thank you. Thanks, Fernando. That was great. Um, we we consistently have questions from uh, our manufacturers that we work with asking about how the, the manufacturing and the architectural world, uh, how Autodesk is addressing that and, and getting those two industries to work together rather than apart. So I think this was a great, great presentation on that. And if you do have any further questions, uh, please uh, uh, reach out to us. Um, I've got uh, right here, go applied. You can go to our, to our website to learn more. Also sales at go applied.com. And that'll come back to myself and I can reach out to Fernando or any of our technical or experts as well. Um, or feel free to give me a call. Uh, David Elliott, I'm the director of uh, engineering and technology here at Applied. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, got just a couple other points for you guys. One is uh, we do have a couple free webinars coming up here uh, in June on iLogic and Configure World Design, July uh, on Vault Professional and Lifecycle Schemes. And in August, we've got AutoCAD, uh, Best Practices for AutoCAD Electrical. And then in September, there's an inventor collaboration, really focusing on working with your customers, working with vendors, um, sharing those models and getting information uh, shared between two different groups. Um, and, and Autodesk has really spent a lot of time and, and money and energy in um, making that collaboration process so much better in the last couple of years. So we wanna just highlight all the different options you have out there and what makes sense for what you're trying to do. So these are some really good webinars that are coming up. Uh, the last thing I have for you guys is uh, you're going to be receiving a survey here as soon as we close out of this. Uh, please take the two minutes and answer the three questions. It's really just asking how it was today and uh, what kind of topics we can have for next year's Applied Day events. Um, those topics, are, you know, this year's event was driven by the topics that were submitted from last year. So please, uh, you know, submit any topics to us and we'll make sure to uh, address those next year um, or maybe sooner in our monthly webinar series as well. So. Um, and then also in the next couple of weeks, you will be receiving your $100 training vouchers for attending the events. So look for that. If uh, you are planning on attending any training classes sooner, uh, please just let your sales rep know that you attended these classes and I can confirm that uh, with the sales rep. And our training uh, calendar is uh, in the attachments here as well. So feel free to, to download that schedule. Um, if there is any uh, further questions, again, please reach out to us. Uh, we really appreciate you guys taking the time today to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about uh, Autodesk and uh, their, their crossover between manufacturing and architecture in the BIM world. So, again, thanks for attending, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here in the near future. Thanks. All right. Thank you.